Hi, it's Corrine, and today I thought I would do a review of Touch 5 markers. These are an alcohol-based marker, and I will link below the eBay seller that I purchased mine from. I was very happy with uh, the seller that I purchased them from. I'm not sure if she still has these in or not, but if you search for Touch 5 markers, you can find lots of places that sell them. These are a very economical marker. I don't, or at the time I didn't own any Copic markers and I just had a hard time investing in Copics when I didn't even know if I would like them. So I went ahead and purchased these markers and I just want to go over a few things that I've learned about them. They come in different sizes. You can order them by 60, 80, 168 pack. And then this here is the 218 pack. They also sell them by different categories, like they have a fashion, general, nature, animation, and I believe this 218 covers all of them. So I believe it's all the colors. Plus it also comes with a colorless blender and a silver and gold pen. They come packaged very nicely. They come in these canvas bags that have a zipper opening. And here I just have the other two bags that these came in. But you can leave them stored in this. It's actually a decent bag, but I wanted my own storage system. So I, I made my own here, which I have a quick video showing exactly how I did that. This wooden crate, it's a pretty heavy crate. I got this from Michael's. Let me see if I can show you the side. I know this is a little hard to see on camera, but I love how it stores all my markers. And at the top here, I have a little cheat sheet for where they all belong. When I first organized them, I did them all by color, but I was having a hard time finding a marker when I needed one. I was having to search through them and it was, it was a little bit harder. So instead I organized them. I know it's probably hard to see, but I have 12 different sections here. So here's like one section, two, three, and four. And then I, I have here the numbers where they belong. So when I know that I need a number, I can look quickly at which section it belongs in. And I actually have them this way, section one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. So if I know it's in section three, I can pull one out quickly and find it easily that way. Their numbering system, the Touch 5 numbering system, does not make any sense to me, not like Copics do. So this is easy way for me to find them. And I, like I mentioned, I do have a quick video showing how I made this, but I can show you quickly what I did because I'm making another one here. Let me set this back here. I simply use these boxes from Dollar Tree and these are four by four by four and a quarter, I believe. And I glued them all together and I added a piece of chipboard to the center of them so that that gives me different sections. And I have six boxes here glued together so I can put my markers in one section and then a different section. This is what works well for me. And then, like I said, I got this wooden crate from Michaels. I popped this entire piece into the wooden crate and I did glue it down, you don't have to. And then it still gives you a little room at the top in the wooden crate. I believe this wooden crate is nine by, 15 by nine by five, somewhere in that. And um, it's just an easy way for me to find them. And these boxes come in different colors if you don't like the red. The red didn't bother me at the time when I purchased them. That's the only color that they have. But I see that at the Dollar Tree they have lots of other colors. You can also spray paint it. I considered spray painting it, but when I set it in there, you really don't notice the red. So it didn't bother me. But if it does bother you, you can always, like I said, change the color, spray paint it. So I just kind of want to talk a little bit about these markers. They come in both a white or black barrel. I chose the white barrel and they have two different ends on them. They have what they call a medium fine and a chisel end. I find that I don't use the chisel end too much, but um, this end here, what I do like about it is it's small enough that you can get into a lot of detail with stamps. So it's great for, for getting into small detail with it. In comparison to a Copic sketch marker, 
The Copic has a brush end, which is really nice. They also have the chisel end and their chisel is a little bit smaller. They um, have an indicator. Let me close this up here. They also show that the number on the caps and I did see other reviews that if you're that the caps are a little hard to get on and off. That is true. They are a little bit hard to get on and off compared to Copics, but it's nothing too bad. It's just a little bit harder and you can't quickly put it on. You have to make sure you put it on correct or else you can ruin your the nib here. So they do have the number and the name on them. Their numbering system, like I mentioned, does not make much sense. So that's not as helpful. Um, but what I did find helpful is a color chart, which I'll go over that in just a moment. I do want to explain that they blend fairly well. I am no Copic expert. I just recently started purchasing some Copic pens because once I started using these, I fell in love with alcohol markers. So I did not like their choice of skin or hair colors in the Touch 5. So I went ahead and ordered just some colors for skin and hair, which I haven't received all the colors yet. But that's what got me started. Then I decided to order more Copics. And also with the Copics, you have a choice to order the Chow markers. The Chow markers are a little bit smaller. They hold a little bit less ink. They also have the brush nib. So it's similar to this sketch pen, but they are at a lower price point. And I purchased my Copics. I've purchased about 30 of them so far. I'm slowly going to build up, starting to build up my collection. I've gotten them from Blitzy. I am not at all affiliated with Blitzy. However, their prices are amazing and their shipping is fairly quick. Um, I got them within a couple of days, I think less three, four days, something like that. And anything over, I believe it's $30 is free shipping. And if you check around Blitzy, Blitzy is the first place that I usually check on the prices because 90% of the time I'm going to find it cheaper on Blitzy. And I also like that they have a referral program. I'll put a referral link down in the description box. Check that out because if you use that referral link and you've never signed up for Blitzy, they give you, I want to say it's $10. I'm not positive on that. $10 off your first order by using a referral link. And then anybody else that uses your referral link they give credit in store as well. So I love their referral um, program. They also give you, every time you make a purchase, they give you points towards that. So every time I purchase, I get some money off because I've made a previous purchase. And their child markers, I have gotten them for as cheap as $2.50, but they're more usually around the $4 price mark. Sketch markers are, again, I've gotten them as cheap as about $5. You can find them sometimes $6. It just kind of depends. So shop around, but definitely make Blitzy one of the places that you shop around and check the prices. So let me just show you this on the Touch 5 markers. They have this little indicator that show which is the bullet point. And they really are nice. Here's a chow marker. These blend really well, the Copic markers. Touch 5 markers are not Copic markers. They are not Copic markers to me, from what I know, are the best out there. But these are a great alternative if you cannot afford Copic markers. And one thing I like is I've been working on some digital stamps where I use some of the Touch markers, Touch 5 markers, along with my Copic markers. Because I have a huge selection of the Touch 5 markers and only a small selection of the Copic markers at this point. So I like that I can mix and match them. And what I mentioned previously is what I think is important is a color chart. Their, uh, their lids sort of match what they are in real life. Um, it's a pretty good match. It's not the best, but there are some markers that look nothing like their lid when you go to pull them out and, and uh, draw with them, they don't look like they actually look on paper. So I think this is an invaluable tool 
to do. I just simply, I designed this myself. I just made some lines, numbered them, and then drew them out. I did laminate it just so nothing can get on it. So I apologize for the glare if you're getting a glare. But this is a great way to just kind of glance at what colors you have and a quick way to go through deciding on what colors you want. Then what I also found, because their numbering system, unlike Copics, you can get them in color families. These are not in any type of color families. So what I like to do, and once I've completed a whole page, I'm going to laminate it like I did this one. That way it stays nice and clean. But as you can see, I'm working on these here. What I do is I find three or four colors that I, I check on a, another piece of paper to see if they blend well. If they blend well, then I put them on this. And this is a quick reference that I can go to and find different colors that I think blend very well together. So it's a, it's a great tool to have. Um, and lastly, I just kind of want to show you some of the coloring I've done with them. This, I bought the markers about six, six months ago. And, and just in the last month, I, I pulled them out and really started playing with them. And I'm pretty happy with the blending that I'm getting from them. You know, I still have a lot to learn. I have a long ways to go. But so far, I'm pretty, pretty happy with them. These are all using the Touch 5 markers. And as you can see, I can get some decent blending with them. They don't blend as easily as Copics do, but they're very nice. Here I did with the Touch 5 markers. I added some Winca Stella to the flowers. Same, this is Touch 5 markers. And then these are, this one is, um, these two are Copic. This one here is Copic. And then these are the Touch 5 markers. Also, I have these stamps here. This one I did, I used both the Copic markers and Touch 5 markers. And that's what I like is that I can combine them because I don't have a lot of colors in the Copics. I can choose from the Touch 5 and they do blend well. This, these flowers here were with Copics and the yellow ones were with the Touch 5 markers. And then these were a mixture of both Copic and Touch 5 markers. So again, it just gives me a lot more choices to choose from. So, if asked if I would recommend the Touch 5, five markers, absolutely, hands down, I would. I would also recommend that if you could purchase some Copic markers, I would suggest getting them in hair and skin colors and maybe some primary colors. That's what I started with, reds, greens, blues, so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, check out the Blitzy referral link and check out the prices on Blitzy, see if it's something you're interested in. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And if you wanna stay tuned for the quick tutorial of how I made this storage unit, then please do. Thanks so much for watching, have a great day. So you only need a couple of items for this project. This is the box that I previously showed from the Dollar Tree. You don't need the lid to it. And these boxes are four by four by four and a quarter, which were perfect and they fit inside my wood crate perfectly. I have six pieces of medium weight chipboard in black cut to seven and 13 16 by four and one eighth of an inch. The 13 16 is just slightly smaller than seven and seven eighths of an inch. I have my Fiskars paper trimmer with an old blade in it because it will dull your blade using the chipboard. And I'm using some E6000, you don't have to use it, but I like it all adhered together. So on the long end, I'm simply putting it in my paper trimmer and scoring it at two inches, flipping it all the way around and scoring it two inches. That gives you two score lines and now you just wanna bend against those score lines. You can add tape along that bend if you want, like electrical tape or duct tape for added security, but I didn't find that it was necessary. And now that gives you two different compartments for your markers, your pens, whatever your storage is. I love being able to make my own storage for what my needs are. 
So now I simply did this with all of them. I have six boxes. I added my chipboard to the middle and I am going to add the E6000. Like I said, this is not necessary. It, it's pretty snug in there, but I just wanted to make sure that it didn't move around. So I'm going to add the E6000 to both sides and I did let this sit overnight. With E6000, if you can let it sit overnight, that's your best bet. So it just slides right in there. I just kind of pressed it down, make sure it was exactly where I wanted. I did this with all six boxes. And now I'm going to glue the boxes together. Again, using E6000. And I'm also using some clamps to hold them while they sat overnight. What I don't show is that I did set something heavy on top of them just to keep them all together because they kind of want to bend out in the back here. I'll show you in just a minute. So I, I put something heavy right on top of there and just let it sit overnight. And then I glued the bottom half to the top half and I was really happy with this storage. It holds all my markers and I'm currently making one for my Copic markers. So thanks again for watching and have a great day. Mm -hmm.